I just got done uh, with a worldwide tour. I got to go to uh, Iraq and Afghanistan to go entertain our troops a couple months ago. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. If, uh, am I an American hero? Fuck yeah, I am. Because they didn't tell me where I was going. They just called me up like, you want to go on a USO tour? I was like, hell yeah. Like, All right, pack your bag, grab your passport, and get on this plane. And I was on that plane for like 14 hours. I was like, where the fuck are we going? We went over an ocean, a jungle, and then we landed in a desert. And I got in the tent. There's a map of Iraq on the wall. I have a flak jacket and a helmet and 14 dick jokes. I go, where are we? He goes, we're 50 miles from the Syrian border. I raise my hand, I go, I don't want to be here anymore. And then I heard a loud explosion, and I go, what's that? He goes, we're firing artillery at ISIS. I'm like, they're fucking here? <laughs> they're here. And then my cell phone started ringing because apparently Sprint only works in the middle of Iraq. <laughs> it's like, really, you piece of shit phone? Four bars, crystal clear calls. <laughs> streaming Netflix. <laughs> I answer the phone, my brother's calling me in the middle of an artillery shelling 50 miles from the Syrian border. My brother's three and a half years older than me. And I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, where are you at? I go, you're not gonna believe this shit. I'm in Iraq. I'm 50 miles from the Syrian border. And this is what he says. He goes, if you get captured by ISIS and they put you in a cage, don't cry like a little bitch. <laughs> what? Of all the times you can cry like a little bitch, that's the fucking time. Do you know the number of tragic events that have to happen for me to get captured by ISIS? The plane crashes, I survive. ISIS shows up, gunfight. I have no fucking gun. I give up immediately. They put me in a cage and I'm like, well, I can't cry like a little bitch. Then <laughs> after a week in the cage, <laughs> ISIS is like, he is very brave. <laughs> he has not cried one time. Would you like to be in ISIS? Fuck no! We will kill you. All right, I'll be in ISIS then. There's just a picture of me in the newspaper like, ah! Right? All my buddies from high school like, do you hear Gar's in ISIS? What? The guy from Drama Club, that fucking guy's in ISIS? Weird. <laughs> I left there and they sent me to Djibouti, Africa. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Djibouti, it's next to Jabal's. Okay, I can't. <laughs> Stupid. <a> dumb joke. <laughs> Djibouti is next to Ethiopia. It is right on the equator of our globe. I got off the plane at one in the morning and the current temperature in Djibouti was 419 degrees. <laughs> And the humidity, fucking all of it. A thousand percent humidity. I asked my tour guide, I was like, tell me about Djibouti. What do I gotta know? He goes, look out for the mosquitoes because some of them have malaria. I go, what are the symptoms of malaria? He goes, you're gonna sweat profusely and shit your brains out. I go, well, I have malaria already. <laughs> I got it at a Taco Bell in Kuwait. <laughs> I'm getting older, man. Like, I'm thinking about a lot of stuff. You know, I'm thinking about dating. Uh, I just turned 30, you know? I just turned 30 a few months ago. And I felt like when you get to, you know, the age of 30, you have to stop with your childish ways, you know? Stop with some of the immature things you used to do. I hate the fact that I'm 30 years old and I'm still ticklish, like. <laughs> I thought I was gonna change on my 30th birthday, like. No grown man should have uncontrollable giggles. I don't like that. Before I get out of here, I will say this, that um, 
you know. I feel like as we get up, we lose our imagination. I be having regular ass dreams. My dreams be regular shit. Like I have a dream about work, bills, money, like all of this regular shit. The other night I had a dream that I woke up, made breakfast, clocked in the work, <laughs> cursed out my boss, clocked out, came home, made dinner just to realize none of that really happened. <laughs> like I do that for real. The only reason I knew it was a dream is they don't even have a job. Like, that's the... But maybe it's time to reassess what it is to be American. Maybe it's time to reimagine what it is to be America. You know, maybe, maybe you don't get to have 50 guns. Maybe you only get to have as many guns as you can shoot at one time. Two. Maybe, maybe like, if you can rig a, the, the gun to your balls and bang, maybe you, can, maybe you can have three. I don't know about 50. People say, well, that's unconstitutional. Well, listen, our Constitution is a living document. You can change things. First of all, we just had the Constitution. We didn't have any of the amendments. Then we were like, here's the First Amendment in America. You can say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> then we realized the Second Amendment was, but you're going to need some guns. <laughs> A few amendments later, we're like, oh my God, this drinking is out of control. No more alcohol. Alcohol's illegal. A couple amendments later, we're like, now that we're thinking straight, let's give women the right to vote. <laughs> A couple amendments later, we're like, oh, we're gonna leave that alcohol back. <laughs> but the people in charge want to pit us against each other so they don't have to deal with the Problems. They want to label us. They want to say, you're a liberal, you're a conservative, fight. You're a red state, you're a blue state. Fucking fight amongst each other. And while we're fighting, they're over here looting the wealth of the world. And when I say they, obviously, I mean the Illuminati. That's what they're doing. <laughs> so some of us might wise up and ask questions like, hey, what are you guys doing over there? And then they have to distract us with shiny objects. They're like, oh, new nickels and quarters. And you're like, oh my God, collect the whole set. <laughs> So they don't fix anything while they're in charge. Here's what they do, they take an old problem, relabel it, put it back out there, hoping to fool us into thinking they fixed shit when they haven't. Uh, there's, we used to have illegal immigration, did they fix it? No, they just called it undocumented workers. <laughs> we solved the problem. <laughs> I saw a brochure at a casino that said gambling is a terrible disease. No, it's not. I have never banged a hooker and come down with blackjack. <laughs> Maybe you've heard this nonsense, obesity is an epidemic. No, it isn't. You know what obesity is? Fat is natural. You don't have to do anything, and fat happens. You know what's unnatural? Abs. <laughs> you ever see people with abs? They're never normal people just walking around. <laughs> to oil themselves down every minute. <laughs> Look at my abs. And it's not an epidemic. If obesity was an epidemic, your fat friend could cough on you. Hey, man. <laughs> that was rude. I can't believe you. <laughs> my God. When you have to call into work, even my phone is fat. Like, Hello, I can't make it today. The fat is going around. <laughs> And even then, your boss doesn't believe you. Are you fat for real? <laughs> Sounds like you're using your fat voice. <laughs> and you're busted. I was using my fat voice. I'll see you at nine. <laughs> Who's the one that has the priest of a daddy? Who's a priest daddy right here? Are you? You are on the You're bringing this This is, honey, my clearance top from Macy's is not on fleek. <laughs> if you think this is fleek, this is fucking low standards you got. You are doing it. Sit down. <laughs> She's sexy and excited about life. You know how when you look cute, you're like, fuck that. I want the world to see me. You're the girl in the club who walks around for no goddamn reason. You're that bitch? Yes. <laughs> you know how you trying to get your dance on? What the fuck is she going again? Sit down. <laughs> Knocking your drink out your hand and shit. Bitch, if you walk by one more goddamn time, I'm gonna tell security she got a gun in her purse. I want her to leave. The fuck? We are awake, we are awake. I wanted to make sure we're awake. We're awake, yes. Oh, happy holidays, happy holidays. Anybody leaving, going to travel, gonna see their real families? Of course you are. Your hand gonna be up the whole goddamn time. This bitch wants attention, attention. 
She wants attention for Christmas. This is your best friend right here, like your friend? And you're the quiet one, right? Is that why you have your hair in that side pony thing where you're so embarrassed by her? You're like, oh God, here she is. Here she goes again. Let me cover my side of my face because this bitch is going to get it thrown out again. Is that why you have the hair side sweep? You're like, oh God, no. She's embarrassing me. I don't even know this bitch. So imagine what she's making you feel like. It's always the hot chick. It just talks so much. I know, it's so cute. What's your name? I love you. What's your name? 40, I love you. 40, God! Are you still talking that much? <laughs> like you ain't learned at 40, shut the fuck up once in a while? That's, one, that's what you learn as you get older. Like, you're cute, but you know, you can ruin the cute with the mouth. You know that, right? <laughs> you know, you can fuck up cute with, with too much chatter. You can kill an erection with that. <laughs> the same. You ever watch a guy's dick go down because you talk too much? I have. I have watched, I have watched an erection die. And I'm like, I want to discuss it now. And he's like, all right, well, we're not going to do the other thing, so we might as well talk about it. You know what else kills erections? The, uh, my undergarments, Spanx. Spanx. You, if you want to see a, an erection die, let the man undress you when you're wearing full Spanx. Because they always want to be sexy, right? They want to roll your shit down and undress you for you, and they roll it down, and your fucking nipple pops out and hits him in the face. I'm like, well, I told you. Let me do it. I don't... Cowboy, let me go to the bathroom. I'll come out butt naked, and we can get going. You know what I'm saying? But you don't want to do it. Trust me. There's way too much going on. Because I wear the kind of spank that make me go from a size 14 to a 2. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that pop out by surprise. I will kill the night. Anyway. I did all my Christmas shopping in Mexico. I got $1,000 worth of shit for $50. <laughs> I got shit that don't look good no place but Mexico. You get home, you like a monkey on a surfboard. What the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> That's going to be a gift. I like Mexico. I do shit there I can't do anywhere. I went scuba diving in Mexico, and I can't swim. <laughs> but they qualified me in Mexico. <laughs> I'm a certified diver. <laughs> yeah. Going back for my pilot license uh, <laughs> next week. Thinking about trying some surgery. I'm gonna be all I can be in Mexico before they close. <laughs> Get my certificates. I went scuba diving, the only lessons they gave me. They say, Senor, stick your head underwater. I did that for like 10 seconds. I came up, he said, can you breathe, Senor? I'm like, yeah, we gonna dive today. Gonna die today, senor. And I've been drinking tequila. I thought I said, we gonna die today. <laughs> we gonna die. Uh, a brother scuba diver. Fish couldn't believe I was down there. Fish swimming up to me all confused. I saw a shark, he didn't even fuck with me. He, you know he was thinking, this gotta be a setup. <laughs> uh, somebody got a harpoon somewhere. I think this is how we lost Charlie. So I get adventures when I go to Mexico, because you gotta live on the edge. You know, I went to a sushi bar. Yeah, I did. Jose's Sushi. <laughs> Actually, uh, it was pretty good. Started out with chips and salsa. <laughs> Everything in Mexico started with chips and salsa. I went to court in Mexico, they started with chips <laughs> and salsa. Oh. 